Hi and welcome to this week's meeting C++ block role highlight. Um, this week is full of highlights. It's a lot of things that you can read through. Um, as you see, there's like from, from my own, if you're looking for jobs, there's a lot of jobs posted, but also the Qt block has a lot of things about Qt. And then there is sprinkled a lot of other uh, great highlights. Um, from all of these highlights, I've chosen this post from the LLVM blog, uh, which is about text formatting in C++ using libc++. Um, and so this blog post goes a bit into detail. It gives not too much, but it gives you a good overview on what uh, C++ right now in the standard supports with SD format what is in the newer version of LLVM, which has been released a few days before um, in September, LLVM uh, slash Clang 15. And it also goes into the plans, how and what they will improve for the next version LLVM 16. Um, they also quickly mentioned that uh, with C++ 23, um, there will be a steady print, which will improve formatting support even more. But that is currently, of course, not implemented for uh, them. That's, they're on the way to that, but you have to read the article to so know the full story. And I, I like that they are posting this because the LLVM block has not posted a lot of those things for, for C++. It's often been very much about LLVM. And I like that they actually you know, talk a bit about the ongoing work, what they started to do updates and on. I hope they continue that. That's really nice. Uh, and a good blog post, good structured, good code examples. Um, there is also the format library, of course, which this is based on, which I you know, quickly want to mention. Um, the format library in the standard is there since C20 and it's being implemented right now across the three main compilers, the three implementations, which most of us, you know, run code on in one way or another. Um, and you see there's just a small, um, it's not the full library. That's The full library has way more support for other things. So it's just the four main functions which are listed on uh, CPP reference. They are also for the actual library, which is, has been standardized, is a page called fmt.dev format dev, um, which gives you a good overview of what this library can do. Um, the standardization of such a library always brings that the standard, the standard can only contain a subset of the library, but the standard has then the advantage that the standard is able to use the, the standard to the full extent while the library might use internal types. Um, and if, you know, you know, you want to be more familiar with format. It's also on GitHub, of course, so you can look through that. Um, and this whole situation was, you know, we, we standardized format, but it's also available as a standalone library for a long time now, uh, thanks to the work of Viktor Serovich. Um, what do you pick, right? And that's your choice. Um, I know that the format library supports many things which are not so well uh, right now in the standard because they could only, you know, limited feature set standardized. Um, and I know that, for example, my keynote speaker, uh, Daniela Engert, has used format and she has been involved with format prior to that, but she has uh, worked on a module version for format to as open source and to see how this, you know, interacts and plays with various implementations. Um, very important, great work, which I think already mentioned in one of those uh, feature videos here. Um, so you probably want to see if you are able to import the full library in your code base, if that's possible. Maybe you are in a setting where it would be easier to get the standard version. Then the standard version probably is a preferable one to you. But otherwise, the updated and newer library, which is not only a subset of the standard, um, might have features which are good for you or which you need, which you want. So um, that's basically me saying, do your research on this. Um, I personally 
currently would probably pick the library and not the standard version for the simple reason that uh, there's still a lot of implementation and uh, defects going on with this. And the library itself probably is more for cross-platform work right now suited than the standard version, which is still standardized, but it's in the implementation phase. And uh, if you if you can use the, the library, that probably is uh, a good route to think about. But that's your decision, you know. The standard version of format is also very good. Um, and the article goes through, you know, uh, the pros and cons, what is in Clang implemented. I don't know what is in like in GCC or in, in the Visual Studio implemented for that actually currently. Um, so do your research on that. And also depending on your code base, what you use, right? Um, I do also want to mention that there is a second post on text formatting with format. So you can read two articles on this. And this is an article which goes into a bit of opinion and a bit of examples how to use SDD format. And it's by the author of format, Victor Selvich. Um, it's hosted on the blog from uh, Krajewski. And also, he's a speaker, by the way. Uh, <laughs> can cannot mention it, right? Um, so it's a nice article to read through. Um, and this makes us two nice articles on format, which I want to highlight this week. I do also want to mention, as I mentioned, there's a lot of posts. This Herb Sutter has posted that he implemented a void and how he did that. Um, Conan IO has a post on getting up to speed with the latest Conan features. So if you use Conan or want to use Conan, that is a good read. Um, I've posted a lot of jobs because next week the job fair is. So there's still like an option for you to book that. And that's interesting to your uh, employer. Then I've uh, announced a tool fair, a book and tool fair with Bjarne Strauss, Trupp, and Klaus Eagleberger currently signed up. I've sent the authors of other books a link to sign up for this. So we probably have a few more authors at the fair. And um, I've released the first version of the schedule for the meeting C conference this week. So if you want to come to the library to, to the conference, that'd be a good look for you. And then of course the cube block, uh, cube six four is released. There's a good article on getting started for Qt with Android in today's time frame. Um, Qt 6.4 is bringing the WebAssembly port of Qt to Qt. Um, and so there are various articles on this on the Qt blog, and one of them is for embedded system makers in this week. So you might, if that's interesting to you, right? You got to read through that then. Um, and then there's a lot of other things um, for package managers. There's actually also a blog post on the Visual Team blog. But I last but not least want to highlight the post by Vittorio Romeo, the set state of debug performance in C++. Um, Vittorio Romeo also works as a game dev. And there always has been some conflict with game devs and modern C++ and standard C++ because the debug performance of this code is not always where it should be. And this is a problem if you kind of, you know, need to debug your game and play your game and the debugger and it's not fast enough, that becomes really a problem. And as those two communities which use C++ and are not so well connected, I think this is really important that Vittorio speaks up here that this is something we should look more at and see that you know what can be improved with that. Um, I think the debug implementations, the debugging tools have caught up with us a bit, but it is true that the C++ language was you know having both modern C++ features. Um, lots of those features are depending on optimizations. And if those optimizations are not turned on because you want to debug, it's not as fast as it should be. And so that is a very good read. And thanks for bringing this up. Which, you know, there's a lot of other things which I didn't mention. Um, 
you probably want to look at this closer. Um, thank you for your attention. Links are in the description, and see you next week.